much protein do I need to build muscle after 50? Hmm, that's a good question. And while it all depends on who you ask and what research papers you look at, two things always ring true. The first is that it takes much more than just protein to build muscle after 50. And the second thing is that while research papers and meta-analysis should always form the base from where we start and how we view things, it shouldn't form our overall decision. Why am I saying that? Well, not all the time is research the most optimal and nor does it fit every situation. I'm Simon H, Muscle After 50 Coach, and in today's video, you're going to discover one, how much protein you actually need to build muscle and why protein isn't the only thing that you need to consider, especially over 50. I'm also gonna do something slightly different. I'm rolling up my sleeves and I'm going head to head with an important research paper that I found. And I'm going to explain why I wouldn't follow the findings in a research paper, blindly follow them. I'm going to discuss that. And then I'm going to leave you with some protein covered, actionable tips that you can take away with you so you can implement straight away to start building more muscle after 50. Now, talking about protein covered, how much protein do you have in a day? Leave a comment and let's engage and let's share what we're currently doing and why we're currently doing it. So, Pop how much protein you eat in one day. Now, are you ready? Come on, let's go. We're gonna start right at the beginning with why does muscle loss happen? Because this is really super duper important and it links very well with the research paper that I'm gonna share with you and also why I recommend the amount of protein I do. You see, as we get older, our bodies respond to protein intake changes. When you're younger, eating protein naturally spikes muscle protein synthesis, and that's the process that builds muscle. After 50, your body's ability to stimulate muscle protein synthesis becomes blunted, a phenomenon called anabolic resistance. Studies show that while older adults, or should I say most older adults, can digest protein just fine, their muscles don't respond as robustly as they used to. Researchers found that older adults have a reduced muscle protein synthesis response even when given adequate protein. This is mainly due to a change in muscle signaling pathways and a decline in muscle sensitivity, making it harder to convert dietary protein into muscle. However, don't fear, there's a silver lining. Resistance training and taking certain supplements can partially reverse this decline. Lifting weight sends powerful signals to your muscles, triggering growth even when your protein response is lower. That's why it's essential not only to eat enough protein, but also to pair it with strength training and the right supplementation. Okay, so before I give you my personal recommendations for protein intake, I want to quickly swerve to a meta-analysis that I saw that um, had 36 studies across 1,700 people with an average age of about 65. Now, this research was to study how increasing protein intake in older adults affects not only their muscle mass, but also strength. So the researchers tested hand grip strength, leg strength, the ability to get out of a chair unaided, gait speed, and muscle mass. They found out that there was no benefits to any of the strength markers by adding in extra protein. So what we can see from this is that by adding in extra protein without the straight training did not improve strength or slow down the decline in muscle mass. Not surprising. Now, the next thing the researchers looked at was how older adults' strength training and muscle mass varied between strength training programs with extra protein and strength training programs that didn't have extra protein. Now, 
this one was a surprise because there was no benefit to the extra protein. So that kind of leads us to wanting to ask some questions like, well, what kind of protein were they consuming? Well, apparently they were consuming a varied amount of different proteins, including whey, which kind of tells us that strength and muscle mass isn't driven by low quality protein. Maybe these adults were already eating enough protein and the extra amount wasn't helping them. In fact, they were eating the RDA or protein with about 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. But before we go on any further, there's a distinction that has to be made. The studies was focused on non-frail adults, which is quite important. So here are my thoughts on the findings. And hopefully this will give you a better understanding of why when it comes to research papers, that while they do form the base of where you might be starting in the direction you look in, you need a certain amount of adaptability and a measured amount of common sense. The meta-analysis of 36 studies found that increasing protein intake alone, even when paired with strength training, did not improve strength markers or muscle mass in non-frail older adults. This lack of effect likely ties to anabolic resistance that we mentioned earlier. While younger bodies respond well to protein intake, older adults need more to achieve the same effect due to the blunted response. Now, the study used various protein sources, including high-quality whey, suggesting that the issue isn't about the protein quality. Instead, the older adults may have been using or consuming the RDA of 0.8 grams per kilogram of protein, which is likely insufficient for overcoming the anabolic resistance. <laughs> My recommendation would be 0.7 grams to one gram per pound of body weight for maximum muscle protein synthesis stimulation, especially when you combined it with mm, strength training. Finally, the studies focus on non-frail individuals who may already have sufficient muscle mass and strength. These individuals likely don't show much additional benefit from extra protein unless training intensity or protein intake significantly exceeds their baseline. Frail older adults, however, might respond better to increased protein and resistance training as malnourishment is usually a major factor. So if you want to have a gander at the same research papers, there's a link in the description. Now, question number two. What is your favorite protein? Leave your answers in the comments and let's engage. Now we know about protein, that it takes more than just considering how much protein we need. And we also have to consider the anabolic resistance and muscle protein synthesis. Let me leave you with some actionable tips of how you can address anabolic resistance. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to focus on leucine-rich foods. Leucine is an amino acid that plays a crucial role in muscle growth. Foods such as chicken, fish, and eggs are all rich in leucine and can boost your body's ability to synthesize muscle. Okay, before we jump off the L-leucine train, let me talk about if we're a vegan. If you're a vegan, it is mightily important that you pair your protein correctly. And what I mean by correctly is making sure that you have various different proteins that when put together, you are covering all your nine essential amino acids, especially your L-leucine. Now, if you find that you have a problem pairing the right amounts of protein and the right amino acids, one thing that you can do is purchase yourself some L-leucine, free form L-leucine. Now, what I would do is I would probably take two and a half grams, which is about half a scoop, with my main protein meals. And what this will do then is to ensure that when you are consuming protein, you're not just wasting your time consuming the wrong proteins, that you also have the most anabolic amino acid 
within that mill, and that is L-leucine. Let's go on to the next tip, and that is to distribute your protein evenly throughout the day. And the reason why I say that is, in your 30s, your muscle protein synthesis is 100%. In your 50s and beyond, your muscle protein synthesis might be 70% or 60%, depending on genetics and, the very, and a few other variables. So it would make better sense to be able to have three or four shots, which are three or four meals at 70%, than only one or two meals at 70%. It gives you more of an opportunity to be able to create muscle protein synthesis and in turn build muscle. Now, with that said, you know us on this channel, we like to cover as much as we can. So if you're into intermittent fasting or long periods of fasting, we now have seen research that suggests that there is no upper limit to how much protein you can have in one meal. So back in the day, it used to be, oh, you can't have any more than 30 grams of protein because your body will start wasting it. Well, it's now been proven that that isn't the case. But with that said, it was a research paper, and I am not sure if that research paper was carried out on women and men of 50 years and over. So bear that in mind. But remember that probably the most important thing that you can do if you do intermittent fasting is to make sure that you get all of your protein in in that small window. Okay, the next tip is to make sure that you're eating protein in and around your workouts. So if you're going to the meal before your workout should be high protein, as well as good carbs, obviously. And especially after you train, you should be considering the highest quality of protein. And also, you should be eating a good amount of quick digesting carbohydrates because those carbs will help to direct and drive protein and increase, in turn, muscle protein synthesis. The last tip I'm going to leave you with is to also consider certain supplementation that is going to help initiate and or increase muscle protein synthesis. So we already spoke about the first one, which is freeform L-leucine, which is the most anabolic amino acid there is. And then the next one is HMB. Now, I've been using HMB for a couple good years now, and this has been proven, scientifically proven, to help increase muscle protein synthesis. It's something that I also um, encourage my clients to take, but forget that, because what I'm most excited to try in the next two weeks is the Bioactive Precision Peptide Fit, which has been proven, scientifically proven, to increase, to out-increase whey and HMB when it comes to increasing muscle protein synthesis. So if you're interested in following my journey, taking this non-injectable peptide called FIT, it's coming to the market very, very soon. In fact, the 16th of November, 2024. So keep tuning in and watching to see how I get on with FIT. And in the meantime, if you are really interested in increasing your um, muscle protein synthesis, write FIT in the comments and I'll send you the research papers, then you can go and take that to your doctor and have a good discussion about it to see if it's the right supplement for you. Now I'll see you on the next round of building muscle after the big 5-0. We Thanks. interrupt this program to bring you an important announcement. When you download our free cheat sheet, not only will you discover the secrets to transforming your body and your life in your 50s faster than you ever imagined, you'll also discover how to gain muscle in your 50s 
this will shock you, not only because of how easy it is, but the speed at which you'll see results. You'll also find how to lose weight in your 50s. We'll reveal the method that completely flips everything you thought you knew on its head. No fad diets, no grueling cardio sessions. And if you've been feeling like a dead car battery, it's time to get your energy back. We'll show you how. Now the link for this free cheat sheet is in the description.